What does this morning mean for you? Well, I think it could be momentous, but I think that one has to understand that uh, when we're facing someone like Kim Jong-un, you're facing uh, someone different from what we've seen in, in uh, Korea before, from North Korea. He's more like his father, uh, grandfather than his father. And he's a very shrewd operator. And so it all sounds good. The question right. is, how are you going to verify any, any uh, denuclearization? You have a, re a relationship with Mr. Moon here on the right. For those of you on Bloomberg Radio, Mr. Moon, the leader of South Korea, you've helped restructure uh, their debt. But also you've seen the disappointment of 2007 as well. Exactly. There is a part of South Korea that desperately wants a rapprochement with North Korea. Where in South Korea is the group that pushes back with caution? I think two groups. One, the oldest who remembers the Korea War, and the other are the youngest who don't want to see uh, the very good economy of South Korea having to support uh, North Korea. So it, it's very interesting. It's a middle group which Moon Jae-in, who's the president of Korea, represents. Uh, I got to know him well when he was President No's chief of staff. Uh, and he has very much spent his life talking about the sunshine policy, exactly. which, which was the policy of Kim Dae-jung to reconcile uh, the South with the North. Uh, and he is very much uh, in that mode. And in, fa in fact, he ran his campaign for presidency when Park was pushed out on the basis of reconciliation with the North. Bill, what's, what's the incentive for the North to give up their nuclear arms? It's obviously w was a great expense. Um, wh why, you know, why not hold on to them and promise a, you know, a kinder tone or something that would be um, perhaps more palatable to them? Well, we're not sure what they mean by denuclearization. We have to see. And, of course, in there you get verification, uh, which I think is key. And you're dealing, as I said, with a shrewd operator. Uh, he's like his grandfather, Kim Il-sung. He, he's very good at playing people off. Kim Il-sung played the Russians and the Chinese off during the Korean War. Uh, I mm -hmm. think you're going to see uh, Kim Jong-un right. play off the Chinese, the Americans, and perhaps the Russians right. later on. Bill Rose, let's bring in Francine Lacroix in London. Francine, good morning. Uh -huh. Good morning, Bill. We're absolutely delighted to have you on this very important day. First of all, does this feel different to 2007? And you're right in saying, look, we've been here before. And then the rapprochement, uh, we saw kind of, the, you know, the spread of uh, North Korea getting away from it. But this, does it feel different because they hug? Does it feel different because you had a young North Korean leader that really seemed to be doing his utmost to be charming? I think the difference here is instead of Kim Jong-il, who was there in 2007 in the North, you have Kim, jo Kim Jong-un, who, as I said, is a shrewd operator. Uh, he wants to right. bring North Korea back into the world. And f uh, very frankly, the Chinese have had a hand in this because when they agreed to go along with the sanctions, particularly on, on, on oil and gas, uh, it made a big difference. Uh, I was saying that right along in various op-eds. And that's brought him to the table. We have to see now how the rest of it goes. Yeah, Bill, do any um, you know, future peace talks, do they need to include China? Do they need to include Japan? And do they need to include the U.S.? Well, I think the Chinese are already talking about reviving the six-party talks. And that included all the ones you mentioned, including Russia. Uh, the question is how this is going to unfold. But the Chinese are key. Obviously, Abi, who's very weak now, as you know, in the polls, uh, has a lot at stake here, uh, including all of the uh, Japanese that uh, were kidnapped over many, many years trying to get them back. Uh, so you've got a lot of interested parties in here, uh, not to speak of our own president, uh, who you have to give credit for here in the sense of taking a tough line, pushing on sanctions uh, with the Chinese. And so the question is, where do we go from here? I, I would very much like to be with my friend Steve Engel, who you have sitting there in Panmujan yes. uh, vis-a-vis uh, talking to him about what the Chinese view of this right. all might be. Bill, I want yeah. to interrupt. Francine, Bill. please. You know, we're just getting a, a president tweet. So he, uh, President Trump, tweeting about the Korea, saying after furious year of missile launches 
and nuclear testing. A historic meeting between North and South Korea is now taking place. Good things are happening, but only time will tell. Bill Rhodes, um, this uh, goes back to also, I guess, the commitment to complete denuclearization from both parties. How ambiguous is this? What does this mean? It's either North Korea getting rid of the warheads, or it could be North Korea demanding that the U.S. gets out of the region. I think you may have all of the above. Although apparently uh, Kim Jong-un has not insisted initially that American tri troops leave uh, South Korea. But we're just, at, we're just at the first chapter here of a long book in the sense of what's going to happen here. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see if we have this uh, meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un and when it's going to take place and what will come out of that. I think it's a good first step. But you have to understand that the president of Korea, South Korea, uh, President Moon Jae-un, has spent his whole life talking about trying to reconcile uh, with, Nor with North Korea. So he has a big stake in this personally.